What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Maniac Mansion. Real quick, we're gonna switch to Bernard and give, there it is, the cassette tape over to Sid. Gonna hand that over because we're gonna be using it relatively soon and we'll head on upstairs to where we will have our second encounter with the tentacle, the green tentacle. Real quick correction from last episode that I noticed that I kept making. I kept mixing up the names of the Edisons, the Edisons being the, uh, the main villains of the game. So there are, there are Dr. Fred and Nurse Edna, who are husband and wife. We saw Nurse Edna in the kitchen. She was in the nurse's outfit, Dr. Fred. We saw in a secret room with Wendy. He was in the lab coat. He had the, the stethoscope, whatever that was, attached to his head. Then there is Weird Ed, who I believe is their son. He was wearing... Yeah, there he is. He's wearing green fatigues. Well, you see him there. And then there's also Dead Cousin Ted, who... We will kind of meet in a little bit. So while this plays out... Oh, actually, another fun fact about the Edisons. In every version of the game, the Edisons are blue, except for the original, I think. And another thing that I just remembered that I didn't point out last time while this dialogue is going on, there is a label around the reactor somewhere where we visited uh, towards the beginning of the game where we needed to push the gargoyle and then go into the reactor room. And oh, he's going to talk to us again. If you read the label on the reactor, it says Made in Chernobyl, which for the time was pretty controversial. And it may, it may not seem immediately obvious why, because the Chernobyl disaster happened, what, 27 years ago? But Maniac Mansion only came out a year after that. It'd kind of be like... It would kind of be like if it read made in Fukushima and the game came out today. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. Yeah, nothing I can do with that cassette player. Just say, hey, there's the Disco Sucks poster back there. And there is a poster about uh, Ron Gilver again, one of the creators of the game. The two important things, though, that we picked up there were the record. We have a second record now. I have to keep those straight in my head. But we also got a yellow key. That yellow key is going to be important down the road. And it's something that we need to give to Bernard for the time being. And then we'll just go straight back to Sid. Go on our merry way. Let's see, I have a couple options I can go for from here. I can either go on the far right door or the one adjacent to it. This one is Dead Cousin Ted's room. This one is a room we can't do... Well, no, we can do a few things so far. So remember how we picked up the radioactive pool water with the glass jar? Well, as long as you don't drink that jar or do anything else with it. There are a couple ways it can actually get you killed. You want to give it to the plant here. And that'll make the plant grow super tall. It's a man-eating plant, so we want to feed it Pepsi because that will sate its bloodlust. Pepsi. Drink of the blood gods. Pepsi for the blood god! There is also a splotch of paint in the wall in the back side of the room. We have the paint remover to remove that right now. We're not going to do that yet. Instead, we're going to come back into dead cousin Ted's room. We're going to pump some iron. Arnold would be super aroused by this because this is totally how working out works. Uh, before I forget, that splotch of paint in the back of the room, the far right where the man-eating plant was, you need the paint remover to remove that. That is a, an essential room for completing the game but we don't have everything we need to go back there just yet, so keep that in mind for later. Now, you can waste the paint remover, which is one of the few ways in the game, I think there are two or three, where you can get yourself stuck in a dead end. And, yeah, just... I think I said this before, but just like Knock Knock, you can get dead-ended, and you'll have to restart the entire game. Unlike Knock Knock, though, Maniac Mansion came out 26 years ago. So it's a little bit more acceptable for this game to have that kind of anachronistic design. But anyway, we're going to take the cassette that we just got from Bernard, we picked it up earlier. We're going to put it in this room. We're going to stick it in the tape recorder in here, and then we are going to see. Do I want to turn that on first? I'm trying to remember the sequence of events. Oh, that chime indicates one of the most important events in the game. At least one of the most important time-sensitive ones, so... Okay. 
I can't really waste any more time. I was going to try to turn on the record player before Ed and, uh, exited his room, but gotta hurry to this one because he actually makes it to the front door relatively quick. The doorbell ringing signifies the arrival of his package. And we want to go ahead and grab his package with Dave, which is why we parked his ass outside for so long. He's been out there just chilling out for a half hour while Sid and Bernard do all the work. But he will now go outside. He won't find a package. He's going to think someone's playing a game of Ding Dong Ditch. It's very important that this happens for a reason that is not going to be immediately obvious. I don't know if I'm going to get around to showing why it's important that you grab his package. The package itself, if I remember correctly, is not all that important. It's making sure that he doesn't get to it. To set something up later on. So that record, there's a lot going on right now. That record that we were just playing and that we recorded the sound for... You could see shattered the vase that was on the piano earlier. So, is this the room where I want to go to? I'm, look, I'm trying to remember which room the dining room was. Or not the dining room, the room with the chandelier. And it is not this room. So, you notice we put the tape recorder in, we turned the recorder on, and then we played the sound. So now we have the recording of the tentacle mating call, that really nasty high-pitched noise that shattered the vase. So now we are going to put the cassette tape into the cassette player in this... Oh, it's the living room. I was trying to remember what the name of the room was. That's going to play the really annoying high-pitched noise. Try to remember to lower the volume for that so it's not, like, destroying anyone's eardrums. When I upload this, or when I edit it... And remember there was a key that was out of reach that was kind of hanging off the chandelier? Well, that's how you get to it. That gives you the old rusty key. Now that Sid and Bernard have worked out. I'm gonna bring Bernard down to around that area, but f let's see. Is he still gonna be? Yes, he is. He will not follow you out into the hall. These two middle doors, those are Ed and Edna's doors. Ed does not follow you out into the hall if you run into his room and he is alerted by your presence. Edna, if you go in her room, she will follow you out into the hall, which is actually kind of important. It's kind of an important detail to keep in mind if you don't have Bernard or if you don't have Jeff. If you don't have either of those two characters, you will need to kind of exploit that a little bit, or you're going to wind up getting kids thrown in the dungeon later on when you go to do the next phase of what we're doing right now. So, two things I'm doing right now. I'm opening the door again since Ed closed it just now. I'm also picking up the bush, which, you know, necessary because there's no, like, move the fuck out of the way command. And then, with my super strength that I just acquired with five seconds of working out, I was able to rip the steel grate off of its hinges. Now I'm heading back through this room. At some point, I will come across Bernard again. Or, I mean, uh, Sid again. Time being, I want to open the fence that leads out back to where the garage is. Again, you need to have worked out in Dead, uh, Dead Cousin Ted's room in order to get the strength to just lift that thing up, lift the garage door up. The yellow key is what we needed to open the trunk up, plus. We got uh, another little key back there, or actually we got the, the faucet, plus we got the tools from the trunk. Now it's just a matter of uh, positioning the kids. Let's see, do I? There's something that... Oh, okay, I know what I'm doing. The reason that I want Bernard and Sid to pass each other, and they will with the way everything is set up right now, because I have to get Bernard into this room as well as Dave, and position Dave by the phone in the library back there. I want them to pass each other because Sid picked up the old rusty key, which is the key to the dungeon. There is a high likelihood that at some point I am going to get Bernard thrown in the dungeon. I There's a way to avoid it. It's not as fun, though. Plus, I wouldn't be able to show off the dungeon 
otherwise. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get Bernard thrown in the dungeon. I do want to give him the key, though. But not yet. Okay, so... Bernard now has tools, and he is unique in that he has the ability to fix things. Jeff, I believe, also can fix the phone. We're gonna fix the phone with the tools. Now the phone is working. This is not to call the Meteor Police. Remember, we found the number for the Meteor Police earlier. It was 0525, I think. That was in the room that we started the episode in, ended the last episode in. So now... Oh, wait. Almost forgot. Ooh, that would have been a crucial, crucial mistake. That actually would have ruined all of my plans. So switch to Sid. Give him the... Where is it? It's the old rusty key. The old rusty key, which came from the chandelier. Okay, give him the key, switch back to Bernard, and Bernard can go on his merry way now. Now, the next step of this involves me going back into dead cousin Ted's room. Dave is positioned over at the phone. We're going to be using that in just a second now that it's fixed, but first, we need the phone number. We need a phone number to call, other than the meteor police. Um... That might be another dead... No, because there are other ways to beat the game. Never mind. Ignore everything that I'm saying. Ignore me! So now Bernard's just going to make his jolly way back up to dead cousin Ted's room. Am I going the right? Yes, I am. Okay. Keeping the room straight. It's not the one at the far right side of the room. It is... Oop. Oop. Even after I said it, I still kind of overclicked. Okay. So we didn't explore this too much before, but if you go to the far right of Dead Cousin Ted's room, he has his own personal bathroom. We're gonna pull back the shower curtain, and dun 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 dun. There is Dead Cousin Ned, Dead Cousin Ted, damn it! Always mix their names up, Fred, Ted, Ned, Edna, Ed, blah blah blah. So if you have, I wanna say it's Michael, or is it any of the kids? You can pick a sponge up in here. We fixed the faucet so we could turn the water on that causes Ted to move out of the way. And that gives us the phone number, which says 1547. The full message is for a good time call Edna. That obviously wasn't in the, the NES version, the NES version, because it's too sexually suggestive. So it, they still needed a way to keep the message in to get players to call Edna and progress the game. So I think in the, the NES version, it just says call Edna, and then it gives the number. So 1547. It'll spend a little bit ringing. We have time to kill. Let's see. Are there any other NES censorship things that I ran across so far? No, but we're about to run across another one. Edna, when she picks up the phone, has a few, uh, a, a small pool of dialogue she can choose from, I think. It's all, uh, kind of sexually suggestive. So again, that was all censored from the NES version of the game. Kind of out of control with the censorship by that point, because really, she's not saying all that much. We'll get- we'll hear a few more bits of dialogue as we run past her. Now that she's distracted and on the phone, she apparently can't hear us entering the room. That lets us come up here to the attic. Where is that? I think the light's right above you, so I don't need to use the what is command. Ah, and we have a very suspicious looking painting up here in the attic above Edna's room. That reveals a safe, which we do not have the combination for yet. So, really, if you try to go back down here, Edna is finally hung up on Dave. Oh, another little bit of censorship before we cut the episode off. What Edna's dialogue on the phone becomes in the NES version, the censored version, uh, she just mistakes the player for Dead Cousin Ted instead of uh, going into the, the suggestive dialogue as, the, as Nintendo deemed it. But we're going to figure out what to do with the safe next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.